Hello guys, Thomas again here at Pebble. Um, in our first video, I showed you how to create a new project with Cloud Pebble, how to make some small changes to the source code, how to build your project, and how to deploy your project on your Pebble with an iOS or an Android phone as the gateway. In this video, I'll show you how to build a watch face and how to display time on the screen of Pebble. If you haven't watched the previous video and you're not sure how to deploy an app on your Pebble, I would really recommend that you do now. So first thing we want to do here is change our app to be a watch face. So you may have noticed that there are two types of apps on Pebble. Watch app appear here in that main menu at the bottom of the menu and that's where our hello world is. And then we have watch faces and watch faces are the application that you see when you scroll with the button on the side of your pebble and they're also listed here in the watch faces menu where you can select the default one so i want my uh, hello world app to appear in that watch face menu and to do that it's very easy i just need to go to settings of my project in cloud pebble and i'm going to change the type of app to be a watch face and then i'm going to click on save changes and recompile my app and it will have two effects. First, uh, my app will be moved to the Watch Faces menu, but you'll see that my app will also, by default, start full screen. So we don't have that status bar at the top of the screen anymore. And if I click up and down, my app is now part of that carousel. And if I go in the menu and scroll down, you can see that my app is not here anymore, but it is in the Watch Faces menu. The most important difference between Watch App and Watch Faces is that watch face don't have access to the button of pebble because the top button is used to switch to the previous one and the bottom button is switch is used to switch to the next one and the middle button is used to go into the menu so when you're writing uh, a watch face you cannot use the buttons of pebble but except that watch app and watch face are very similar in terms of source code you'll see that it's exactly the same thing so now that we're displaying a watch face on Pebble and that uh, we have our hello world message. Let's see how to display time on Pebble. Pebble is an event-based system and just like many other UI um, toolkit in Pebble, you will get event from the system every time something interesting happens. So for example, when a button is pressed or when the time changes. And what we really want today is to be notified every time the time changes so that our app has a chance to update the screen. To be notified of time changes, you use the tick timer service and you need to subscribe to it. So let's do that. Let's call tick timer service subscribe. And this function takes two parameters. The first one is the smallest unit of time that we'd like to be notified of changes. So in our case, I'm going to display the time down to the second. So we want to use the second unit. And then a handler and a handler is really just a function that will be called every time the time changes and so we're going to create a handler and call it handle time changes let's save this and now I can start writing my handle time changes function and my first parameter here is going to be the current time And the second parameter here is going to be the actual units of time that have changed. So Pebble will tell you if the minutes have changed, if the seconds have changed, if the hours and the day has changed. So if you want to, you can avoid redrawing the entire screen, especially if uh, your algorithm to draw the screen is complicated. You can use that to uh, make sure you only redraw what you need to redraw. To display any information on the screen, we're going to use a text buffer and we're going to write in that text buffer the string that we want to display on the screen. So in our case, it will be the time. And we want that string to be available not just when that event handler executes, but also when the system is redrawing the screen. So to declare a buffer in C, we would do char time buffer and declare the 
size of that buffer. So in our case, 10 bytes should be enough. And because I want that buffer to still be available in memory when the system redraws the screen, it's very important here to declare that buffer static. Otherwise, that buffer will be gone with the function and um, we would have a bug in our app. To write the time in our buffer, we use the strftime function and it takes uh, a few parameters. The first one is going to be our buffer. The second one is going to be the size of our buffer. The third one is going to be the format that we want to use to display the time. So here we're going to use our minute and seconds. And finally, the last one is the actual current time. And this is contained in that struct tm tick time that we got when the function was called. And now that we have the time written in that buffer, we need to update that text layer on the screen with the content of that buffer. So we use text layer set text, our text layer, and we want to set the time buffer on our text layer. And again, it's important to understand here that when you call text layer set text, you're actually telling the system that the text layer should display what is contained in time buffer but time buffer needs to still be available when the system will do the actual drawing. Let's save this, let's run this project. And we're displaying the time. Now let's see how to display the date. To display the date, I'm going to create a new text layer on the screen of my pebble. And to create a new text layer, I need to create a new pointer that will be used to keep a reference of that text layer. So I declare a pointer of type text layer and I give it the name date layer. And now I want to initialize that pointer. I want to initialize the text layer that is going to point to. And to do that, I'm going to use one of our text layer create function and we'll see what parameters it takes in just a second but every time you call a create function you're actually allocating memory and you need to make sure that you remember to deallocate that memory when you're done so in your deinit function for each create that you have in your program you should have a matching destroy text layer destroy date layer So our date layer, um, I'd like to display the date in the bottom third of the screen. Uh, remember that Pebble screen is 144 pixel wide and 168 pixel high. So the first parameter to my um, text layer create function is going to be a gerect uh, object or structure. And the structure takes four arguments, the x coordinate, the y coordinate, and then the width of the frame and the height of the frame or the rectangle. So x is going to be 0. I want to start from the left side of the pebble and the width is easy too because I want to use the entire width of pebble so that's 144. Now I said I want to start at the I want to use the bottom third of pebble so 168 divided by 3 is actually 56 times 2, that's 112. And the height height is going to be 56. So I've created my, my layer to display my text and it's going to uh, be placed in the right position. But before it actually shows up, I need to add it in the window. And to do that, we use the layer at child function. And I want to add it in the root layer of the window. I will just make sure that it's displayed with the window and then I want to get the actual layer of my text layer and to do that you use text layer get layer on your dead layer. So that will display my layer on the screen and I also want to align the text. I want it to be center aligned. Text layer set text alignment. Date layer gtext alignment center. Perfect. 
And now in my end all time changes function, I can declare a new buffer for my date. And I will write, I can use the same strf time function to uh, display dates and time. And to display the current month, I'm going to use person B, which will display MAR for March and person E for the current day of the month. And again, tick time here is not just the current time, but it's also the date and the year. And now I'm going to call text layer set text to actually assign this buffer to my text layer. And we're done. So let's run this. Perfect. I have the time, I have the date. And what I would really like to do now is to change the date here to print it a little bigger. And to do that, um, you can of course change the font that you're using. We have a function called text layer set font to set the font on my date layer. And you can use two types of font. You can include your own f your own fonts in a Pebble project, and we'll show you how to do that in a future video. But until then, you can use the system fonts. And so you can use fonts get system font. And if you want to see what the fonts look like, we have a post on the blog, and I'll link to it in the YouTube videos and in the blog posts with this video and um, those are all the fonts that are included. So let's try bitm42 light. So font key bitm42 light. Let's save and run this. And this looks much better. One last thing I'd like to show you is um, how to invert the color of an area on the screen. So a lot of apps will do that. They will have a uh, part of the screen that's white and another one that's black. And there are different ways to do that. But one way that is really easy is using what we call an inverter layer. And so I can create a new layer here, inverter layer. And just like all the other layers, I'm going to initialize it. Now this time I use inverter layer underscore create. The frame of that layer will be the exact same one that we use for the date layer. And we also need to add it on the screen. And right now you should be screaming in front of your computer that I forgot something. And of course, if I create a new layer, I also need to destroy it. And so just like we have text layer destroy to match our text layer create, we also have inverter layer destroy to match our inverter layer create. So let's save this and let's run this project now. Great. So we have the time, we have the date. One last little thing that's annoying is that every time we start the app, there is a little delay before the time and the date appears on the screen. And for a half a second here, maybe you can see Hello World before the time actually appears on the screen. So to fix that, what we need to do is to call the end all time changes function manually to draw the screen once when we start the app and not wait until the first second change to do it. And so to call end all time changes, I'm going to need a struct tm tick time. So I'm going to get the current time, call it now. To get the current time, you call the time function and you pass null as a parameter. And I'm going to call handle 
time changes. First parameter is going to be a struct tm with our time, which will be returned by local time. And I want a pointer to a, a timestamp. And then the second unit. Let's run again. And now you can see that as soon as the app starts, we have the date and the time on the screen. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you like it, please click on the thumbs up button and tell us in the comment how we can improve it and what type of videos you'd like to see about Pebble development. Thanks for watching. See you next time.